Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. All week long, we are catching up with our favorite female judges on daytime TV during our Sisters of the Court week. Yes, and our next guest is a no-nonsense judge from the Emmy Award-winning court show, Lauren Lake's Paternity Court. And in her courtroom, while she shows compassion, she never shies away from laying down the law and getting these people all the way together. Let's take a look. Emotional evolution comes easier when there's legal resolution. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That some of the turmoil you're feeling is not just about the paternity question, which is bad enough, but it's because you all are still so tied and you're not truly free. You're not free legally and you're not free mentally and emotionally. Please welcome down to the circle, <laughs> Judge Lauren Lake. Yay! Thank you for having me. Yes. Oh my God. You Thank you for beautiful. being here. You look amazing. Doesn't she? Thank you so much. Yes. I said, I've never seen a judge this sharp. <laughs> I tell you, you're just a sharp. I try to be a jazzy judge. Yes. A jazzy judge. Jazzy judge. I love that. I love that. Speaking of jazz, honey, mm -hmm. you have an Emmy. Yes. yes. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And I'm telling you, you were in the category with some heavy hitters. You had Judge Mathis down to the category, mm -hmm. you had People's Court, and you still came away with it. It was truly a surprise. I, I can't lie. I was so excited. I was in shock, yeah. but I'm so happy for the team. Yes. We've worked hard. We're in our seventh season, mm -hmm. and I do believe we are amongst some of the best in court, and it was beautiful to be honored by our peers. Yes. It was such a blessing. Yes. Still really and can't even believe it. congratulations on seven seasons. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, seven seasons. Nice. Thank you to all of our viewers who support day in and day out. Watch it on YouTube, on mm -hmm. TV. Mm -hmm. We really, we couldn't do it without you. So has there ever been a case that just truly baffled you that you were like, I don't know what to decide? Oh, in our courtroom all the time. I, I mean, we get in situations where Literally, what people don't know is I don't know the results. Now, that's a surprise to many. Hmm. So when I'm trying a case and I'm talking to people and asking questions, I'm really asking the honest questions I want answers to. Yeah. I don't know the results. When Jerome hands me that envelope, sometimes my hands are shaking because I either want somebody to be the father or I'm like, please, Lord, don't let it be him. Right. You know, <laughs> let us get another shot at this with somebody that got some sense. <laughs> right. you know? And so when I open it, I never know what I'm going to say because I only speak and give my, mm -hmm. my, my ruling based upon the result. We wanted to bring this story to you as well okay. about Future and his, one of his plethora of baby mamas uh -oh. that he has. I'm sorry, was that Shay? Mm -mm. Oh, sorry. That's the truth. It's fine, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Eliza Rain, this is her story. She's, okay. She says he is the father of her six-month-old daughter. She claims Future made promises when she was five months, saying, yeah, I'm going I'm to be there. Then he ghosted, the ghost like the man used, mm -hmm. down to the uh, court. Now he's denying the child is his. Back in August, she went to court to get a court-ordered DNA test, and he has yet to take one. What do you say about this? How can Ms. Rain speed up the process? Well, this is the problem, and this is what people often don't understand. With issues like this, when you have to take it to the court, there could be delay after delay after delay. It could take a long mm -hmm. time to finally get that day in court. And that's why I always encourage people to try to have conversations in the living room yes. so you don't have to have them in the courtroom. But in this case, I think she's maybe tried. My big issue is, so what's the big deal? If you got six, I mean, not to be funny, but what seven? Like, I mean, like just well, because if just potentially you it is your child, you're missing out on yes. days, opportunities to bond. I don't understand what in the world is going on. Right. So in my opinion, the, the sooner the better, especially with paternity issues. If you are this child's father, this child has a right to know you and mm -hmm. begin to bond with you. And it's not like he's not making a living, he can afford to take care of the child. You, you're putting yourself in situations to make the baby, you know? Right. Right? And then you know that. what I'm saying? And I always tell people, I'm like, everybody want to go half on a baby, and then they really going half on a maybe. Mm -hmm. Right? Ooh. Mm. Right? Right. And, and then they want to back out. Yeah. Right? We all doing what it takes to be, go half on that baby. Then we end up with a maybe. Now we don't want no parts of it. Mm -hmm. No, you got to show up. What kind of advice would you give anyone who wants to pursue a career in the justice system? And especially black women, because we deal with pay inequality. Um, yes. Ridiculously. And um, uh, being a lawyer or a judge is a, is a hefty salary. I mean, let's just keep it real. 
but to have pay inequality on that level, what would be the advice that you would give someone who wants to pursue that career? Especially and I think also life. it's important to say, in the beginning, you may not have a hefty right, salary right, okay. at all. I started off taking court appointments uh, and, and it's not always this cash cow pink people think it is. Mm -hmm. My point would be, if you're interested in a career in the law, then know that you will be a voice for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. And you know that that sometimes has to um, carry you through times when there aren't a lot of, there's, there's not, not a money. lot of money. It has to be truly a passion of yours to represent people and to advocate for them. Mm -hmm. And I think people see a certain you know, view of a lawyer yes. and they think, oh, well, we're always carrying, you know, thousand dollar briefcases and wearing thousand dollar suits. Oh, no, baby, that's not what it is. Right. Sometimes you're in the trenches with no money, mm -hmm. believing in someone when everybody else has given up on them, mm -hmm. holding on to an issue or an argument that is unpopular. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a criminal defense attorney. I was always on the unpopular yeah. side of it. Mm -hmm. So it is not easy. And yet it is so worthwhile because being able to tell a story for someone better than they can tell it for themselves, yes. which may get them that second opportunity at life, that second chance, or exonerate them, there is no greater feeling in the world wow. than wow. letting your life have that kind of purpose. We'll have more with Jazzy Judge, yeah. the Honorable <laughs> Judge Lauren Lake when we return. In honor of our Sisters of the Court Week, we're going to play a game called Under Oath, mm. where we're going to pick questions from this fishbowl, and you have to answer them as truthfully as possible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All I right, do. here we okay. go. Now you're under oath. You're under oath. Now okay, pass this okay, to you. okay, yeah. wait. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Look it up. Let's see. Have you ever lied about your height or weight? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> I lied to myself. <laughs> no, it was so funny. I was just somewhere the other day and somebody was like, how tall are you? I said, 5'2". And they kind of looked like, I said, I'm probably 5'1 one and a half. But I round <laughs> up. Right. I round up you gotta and round. I wear a heel yes. all the time. So and then my weight. I don't really lie about my weight only because I don't really tell it. You right. know, I mean, at the doctor's office, I figure out you need to be honest just because they may prescribe some meds. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna take that half an inch. Yes. I'm rounding up to five two. Yes. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. Okay, another like one. That. Okay, put, put this that one right down. there. Yes, I like this. This is cute. <laughs> Swish it around. <laughs> Let's see. Have you ever dined and ditched? I have never done that. Good. Yeah. I neither. have never done that. And probably because I order way too much stuff. I'm a foodie. I'm going to eat mm -hmm. everything at the table, so I'm going to be real wrong. Yes. I can try. No, I've never done that. Yeah, never done that. That's a food. Let me do yeah. That. Yeah, I, and conscience. I'm staying there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing dessert. Right. I'm doing everything. I think about By the, the time I get done life. eating, right? <laughs> that is life. <laughs> life. Everything. No, that's me too. I so by it. the time I get done eating, they could identify me in a lineup. Yes. Because I've been there for like at least two hours. Yes. Let's see what this is. All right, this is too cute. Have you ever lied about your child's age? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> true story, true story. So my son, CJ Woods World, wants to be a little, an, an actor, right? Yeah. So for his birthday a couple years ago, he wanted to go see, sorry Nickelodeon, Nick Sports, you know, whatever that thing is, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So when we got there, they were all in the line and he's all dressed up in his little birthday outfit and they say, all right, only kids 10 and under 10 and over can go down in the pit to get the slime. Mm. Well, if you have a kid, you know that if they you don't get the slime, slime you, you might as well stay home. Because right. if you don't come out with the green on, then you ain't nothing. And it is his <laughs> actual, no really, it is his actual birthday, right? And and um, Russell Wilson Sierra's uh, husband was the host. He loves him. Yeah. Right. So what we got to the line, and you know he about short as me. And he got to the line, and I looked at him, I said, if they ask you, <laughs> you 10. You 10. If they don't ask you, you walk on in. Yes. yes. 
And sure enough, they came down the line, they came down the line, they came to the line, and they said, how are you, how old are you? And he looked, because usually it's like, mommy, I don't lie, you know, yeah, I don't right. lie. And he went to say his age, I was like, it's his birthday. I just like jumped in, because I can tell how uncomfortable he right, was. Right. I was like, it's his birthday, let him in. And so they ended up letting him oh, in. Good. And he got all slimed, and it was everything. But yes, I was ready, willing, and, and able that's what people <laughs> say. He was 10 to get him in. That's I right. know, that's you right. You do what you gotta do, a mother's love. <laughs> Mother's a mother's love. love. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, we you. appreciate you. You're always just a joy. Just a joy. <laughs> so uh, make sure you check your local listings to catch these enter entertaining cases on Lauren Lake's fraternity courts. And the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Yay. <laughs> thank you. That was fun. Thank you. That was fun.